Hi everyone, we are back and we are staying warm, still a little bit cold, but at least the rain is <laughs> let up a little bit. A little bit. Um, but I am here with Johnine Bufford, who is the Global Business Transformation Director of Microsoft. So that is huge title, very <laughs> important job. Um, I would love to hear a little bit more about what you do. Well, it's probably a bigger title than the role. <laughs> um, but I have been with Microsoft for 23 years, and in this role, I'm responsible for driving strategy mm -hmm. for our top 12,000 enterprise customers. Mm -hmm. That's so, amazing. Yeah, and helping our sales leaders uh, in the field drive that transformation with our customers, I think is, it's, um, it's in my, my wheelhouse <laughs> uh, after 23 years. So mm -hmm. it's great, it's a great role. And um, digital transformation is obviously kind of a buzzword now, like it's definitely becoming a thing that companies are very serious about. Yes. Um, what tips of digital transformation um, would you have for other companies who are looking to implement change? You know, one, getting the right partner to mm -hmm. support them, a uh, partner like Microsoft. Uh, but what we have found beyond just the technology, it's the culture. Mm -hmm. How do you lead your people through that transformation? Um, I know that there's some companies out there to help leaders uh, to really think through how do they lead that change? Because if your people don't follow, if your people don't understand the type of change you're trying to bring into the organization, then transformation really doesn't happen. They can be that roadblock. Mm -hmm. So that would be my number one uh, tip, tip <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, for them to really kind of think through. So mm -hmm. it's an end-to-end -end, uh, business, both for your people as mm -hmm. well as the organization. And working at uh, Microsoft and their digital transformation initiatives, um, what's been the one thing that you've really seen as a challenge to get people to kind of hook on to? You know, I would say uh, Microsoft has been a little bit different. Our CEO uh, just really set the pace for us. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I have been re-energized as uh, an employee being there for so long, um, he came in and he helped us believe again. I um, love that. And so it was, um, I don't want to say magic. I think he, I believed in what he was wanting to accomplish. He became very personal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, that everyone within the company has said, I will follow him. And so I think mm -hmm. that's where you really need to be able to articulate your vision. And I think that's what Microsoft has been able to do very well. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and then obviously we're at the Women in Tech Conference. Yes. Um, so what's been your favorite part of the day so far? That is a hard one because I have loved every minute of it. Uh, I love the keynote. I thought that uh, Beth was fantastic mm -hmm. in her storytelling. Um, and so that really helped me think through what are the stories and what stories do I need to embrace and accept mm -hmm. uh, and then be able to retell um, to others. Um, loved the uh, Elizabeth at lunch. I thought that mm -hmm. she was absolutely uh, fantastic and so I just I love the networking with uh, my co-workers I love the networking with others I've I've loved every minute of it oh good yeah. that's amazing yeah this is my first time mm -hmm. uh, and it certainly won't be our last oh, I love that yeah. um, so being around all of these powerful women in technology um, what would you what would be some pieces of pieces of advice that you would give to women in tech don't give up um, I think that Sometimes being a female, being a woman in technology, you walk in the room and you may be the only one, mm -hmm. uh, but don't allow that to stop you. And that seems to be a, a trend, but I think that more and more women are coming into mm -hmm. uh, the industry. Um, but we've got families, we're, uh, we're doing so many different things, we're trying to juggle so many things. And I remember when I, was, uh, when I first started into uh, technology, I was told you can't have it all. Uh, and I've come to know that you can have it all. You may not be able to have it all at the same time. And so have that balance, mm -hmm. but don't give up. And if you want it, go after it with all your might. I love that. Very inspiring. Yeah. Um, so along that line, when it comes to diversity in tech, um, how do you think we're doing as a whole? And what more do you think we need to be doing? I don't think we're doing enough. <laughs> um, I agree. I think that there are... I think we're starting at the schools too late. Mm -hmm. I think uh, when you think about uh, companies that are pursuing high schoolers, uh, and I believe that we've got to start very, very early on. Um, I have a eight-year-old granddaughter uh, who I absolutely adore, uh, but I got her into technology 
uh, I think I bought her first computer two years ago. Mm -hmm. I put her in a coding class uh, a year ago, uh, and she just absolutely loved it. And so I think that we have to fuel that fire as young as possible. Um, and, and giving them the ability to dream. So one, um, let's target schools at a much earlier age uh, so that uh, girls don't feel intimidated about math. Uh, and science and all of the wonderful things and um, around STEM. But then I also think that when you pursue diversity, um, you know, it's just like interviewing. You can't have one diverse candidate in mm -hmm. the pool. You have to have truly a diverse uh, group so that you can indeed bring those in. Um, and there's a conversation. We've got a big conversation uh, within Microsoft. How do we not just, it's not about just diversity, but how do you make sure that everyone feels included? everyone's at the table and that they have a voice. Um, and so I think that's important as well, that we bring, that next step. Yeah, we bring in um, those conversations and those different perspectives, and that's how you can change the world. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. One step at a time. Um, and then, so along that, when you first started your career, what is one piece of advice that you wish you would have known? Oh, hmm, what should I have known? Um, pace myself. Uh, I went after uh, certain components or certain parts of my career very hard, very fast. Mm -hmm. I felt I had to do it all. Um, and so there were, I can look back and there were certain times in my career that I, I just burnt out. Um, and so that would be something that I wish I could tell my younger self. Pace yourself. It's okay. You'll make it through stay the course, but pace yourself. And um, are you big on mentorship at all? Oh, yes. Yeah. I you believe speak in, a little to that? I believe you have to have both mentors, but also sponsors, mm -hmm. uh, advocates. Mm -hmm. um, I think that uh, I went to one conference at one, um, maybe a few years ago, and the speaker indicated, you know, we're always looking for mentors. Mm -hmm but we really need more sponsors and advocates uh, in the boardroom so that we can uh, truly grow our career. But I love, I, I think of mentoring as um, grooming and um, really championing people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that sometimes you can you know, steer people from a career perspective, but you want them to know how wonderful that they are, oh, how uh -huh. um, amazing they can mm -hmm. be. And so, to me, that's what I kind of bring into the mentoring relationships is helping people never forget you are worth it. So it doesn't matter about the various voices that we have in our heads, whether that voice comes from ourselves or others. It's about how do I believe that it's not about my potential. I'm wonderful already. If I don't do anything else, I'm wonderful already. And so to me, when you have that belief in yourself, there's nothing that can stop you. That confidence is important, especially yeah. for women, I yeah. think. I think we all, mm -hmm. I think we all need it. I think men need it. Mm -hmm. uh, but women uh, have to fight so much more in, in certain careers when we are um, very few. And so mm -hmm. it's just pushing through. And I think women have to have a responsibility to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are each other's enemy. And I think that we just have to be champions of hey, I think you can make this, keep mm -hmm. doing, and um, encourage one another. Um, so it's not about always looking for uh, this great mentor. It's just, hey, mm -hmm. as peers, how do I support you? I love that. Yeah, women empowering women. Yeah. That's what this conference is all about. Yeah, so. I love, I've love. i loved this conference. It's been great. Oh, good. Um, and then last but not least, um, when you look 20 years down the line, when you're granddaughter is entering hopefully the tech world. Yes. Um, what do you hope for her and all of the other future women in tech? I hope it's easier for her. I hope she, um, she'll have her bumps in the road because that's life. Um, but I hope that when she walks in a room that there's people, women of all color, all uh, shapes and sizes and, and that she's able to um, make anything that she wants happen. I would want her to also not even walk into a room and it's only women. I want her to truly experience diversity on a whole nother level. 
Um, I want her to travel around the world to gain those experiences. And so I just hope it's a little bit easier for her. I hope so too. And I think yeah. we're going in that direction. I think so. Um, but thank you so much for joining us today. This is Janine Bufford. She is a Global Business Transformation Director at Microsoft, and you can find her on LinkedIn. Um, and it was so great talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. It's been, been wonderful. Absolutely.